Hello, this is James Hamilton. This is a redo of my ADED uh, 520 uh, final lesson. Um, I had just did this about 20 minutes ago with my actual students. Sadly, um, as I tried to, to upload it, uh, something went wrong and I completely lost it. So what I'm going to do here is kind of go over the lesson I gave and actually try to talk about what some of the students had talked about while this went on. I know this isn't ideal and I apologize for that. I just really don't have another way to uh, redo it uh, kind of out of time. Um, anyway, what my lesson today was about was how to actually write a bill or a resolution. Um, what I discussed with the class was what happens is that congressmen today they can be kind of lazy, really. Uh, so what actually happens is they barely read the legislation they have, let alone actually write it. So if you actually want something done, if you want a bill or a resolution passed, it will behoove you to kind of um, write it for them. And if you do that, maybe they'll send it on sight unseen, maybe they'll like it, maybe they'll uh, take credit for it and move forward. Um, so there are steps to writing a bill. First step is you got to define what your goal is. Gave a couple examples here. I said, for instance, you wanted to ban um, those roller skate shoes. You think they're a menace, so you look for ways to ban it. So the first thing you do is that's your goal. You want to get rid of robots. You want to get rid of roller skate shoes. The other example I used that I found on TISLonline.org was to ban uh, steamboat racing. So basically those are your problems. First thing you do is you research to see if there's actually a law in the books that already covers the roller skates or the steamboat or whatever. Uh, so if you find that there's a law already on the books and it works, that's great. If you find there's a law but you can strengthen it, you would put that in the bill title. A bill to end to stop roller skate issues amending Act 574-4 or whatever. So you've researched it. You got to decide then step three is, is it an act or a resolution? An act becomes law. A resolution just kind of happens when you say, um, when you're honoring someone or you don't expect anything to really happen for it. So we've decided that we want a law. We want a bill to ban roller skate shoes. We want a bill to ban uh, steamship racing. Um, so the first thing you have to come up with is a bill title. You want this to be simple. You want to start with a bill to or a resolution to. A bill to ban the use of roller skate shoes. Or a ban to... Um, an act to prohibit steamboat racing on Tennessee rivers and to provide punishment thereof. So what you're saying in the bill title is basically what it's going to do. You want this to be specific because in places like Tennessee, uh, it could be ruled unconstitutional if it's not specific or if it attempts to do more than one thing. So that's step four is the bill title. Step five is optional. You can come up with some sort of preamble. That's where you use the language like whereas this, whereas students who use roller skate shoes are a menace, uh, it would be better for society if we got rid of them. Uh, whereas navigation on the Tennessee rivers are very important, uh, it would be important to ban the use of a steamship, steamboat racing, uh, something like that. Preamble though is not necessary. The next step is your enacting clause or resolving clause. And that is being enacted by whatever this legislation is that the U.S. Senate or the Tennessee legislature or whatever um, be reenacted, this law will go into effect. Uh, the next step is the actual body of the bill. And this is kind of where you get into the actual nuts and bolts. And you actually want to put this in different sections. For instance, section one is you're actually defining the problem. 
Uh, roller skate shoes are shoes with wheels attached to them that allows people to roll. Um, or in the case of the, ca the steamboat, section one, the captain of any steamboat that engages in a competition with one or more other steamboats to reach a destination shall be guilty of the crime of steamboat racing. So the first section is kind of defining what the problem is, what the law is actually trying to do. Section two is basically, it says, what can be done when the law is broken. For instance, section two of our bill to ban roller skate shoes would be um, any sheriff or official seeing someone rolling by on these shoes can apprehend the person in question and arrest them. Uh, section three is when you kind of talk about what the um, penalty is. For instance, uh, for the um, roller shoes, you would say uh, the penalty for this on the first offense would result in a warning. The second offense would result in a $100 fine, and it would escalate from there. Uh, in the case of the steamboat example, it says, upon conviction in the competent court of law, the judge shall sentence the captain to one of the following punishments of the court shall deem appropriate. For the first offense, a Class C misdemeanor. Second and other offenses, a Class B misdemeanor. Or C in the alternative to pick up litter along the riverbank. Uh, so you basically need to have at least three sections defining the problem, what can be done about the problem, arresting people, and what the punishment for that is. Uh, then you need, the, f the next step is section four, or the last section will be when the bill actually takes effect. This act shall take effect in July 1st, 2015. Uh, in the state of Tennessee, for instance, um, things have to wait 40 days, unless you put in the phrase, the public welfare requiring it, which means you can put the law into effect much sooner than 40 days. And that can only be done um, when um, it's a situation that feels like it's warranted. Uh, in our examples, uh, they probably would not be enacted immediately. You would actually probably require time to actually educate the public and to get everyone in line with what needs to be done. Uh, the last step is you list the sponsors of the bill. Um, Congressmen like to take credit for things, so that's actually very important to them. The next thing I did is I gave the students uh, this sheet here. And basically is writing a student Congress bill made easy. And what we did is kind of as a group, I had each of them pick an idea. It says pick an idea that you truly believe should be a law. And it gave some examples of things they considered ridiculous. One of the things they considered ridiculous was the legalization of marijuana. So that told me this was actually kind of old because that's not really all that ridiculous now. Uh, a lot of legislatures are actually moving in that particular direction anyway. Um, so step two, think of what ha needs to happen for your law to be effective. And then step three was basically kind of fill in the blanks here um, on how the bill would look. Uh, we had some examples in class. One young lady over here um, had a bill to um, restore voting rights. Uh, her bill wouldn't have a penalty phase necessarily, but it was being, uh, being enacted that one, uh, voting is a sacred right, and the following um, um, identification will be good enough to prove you are who you say you are and so that you can vote. And we talked about things like adding um, social security cards, uh, affidavits signed by other people saying you are who you say you are, student IDs. And we decided maybe we would have a penalty phase in that particular law for those who try to abridge the rights to vote of others. Um, I thought that was actually a very good law. We talked about how important voting actually was and that it should be encouraged and not discouraged. Um, another example that we had, um, we had a motorcycle rider over there who wanted to make it legal to 
weave in and out of traffic, tra uh, lane uh, changes, I think he called it. So it would be a bill to allow motorcycles to change lanes. Um, section 1 would be explain what change laning is. Section 2 would just say it is now legal for motorcycles, motorcyclists who have the appropriate training to do this. Then the enacting clause, we thought that maybe it would take over a year or so um, to make sure everybody was on the same page on that, everybody get the right training. Uh, another real good example we had was a young lady who wanted to make it a law to require everyone over the age of 65 to have a medic alert uh, bracelet or the button to push. Um, so basically, it would be a bill to make it mandatory for everyone over the age of 65 to use the life alert system. Um, section 1 defined it, what the life alert was and who would have to use it, people over the age of 65. Um, section 2 explained that um, insurance coverage would now be required to pay for the life alert bracelet or whatever. So that's how it's done. Section 3, the penalty phase would be a fine of $100 for those who did not do it. And we decided that that would take some time to enact, so we probably put a date of a year from now for that to actually go in effect so everybody could get ready for it. I thought that that was actually a really, really, really good idea. Um, and, you know, I thought it really very much had merit. Uh, so those were the ideas that we had in class, and they really did seem to really understand kind of the way a bill became a law. They actually said that what really helped them out were the old schoolhouse rock specials um, that they saw growing up. Um, so we talked about this is how a bill becomes a law, um, you know, that if they wanted something done, perhaps their best course of action would be to actually write a bill themselves send it to their congressman, though I did warn them that the success rate of bills becoming law is probably around 5% or less, uh, so it would actually be extremely difficult. Um, and I believe they really did understand the difference between an act and a resolution and the way that one would write a law. Uh, we did finish it up with the back of this page here. Um, with this exercise of whether or not something is a bill or a resolution. I read through it, gave it a blank, and they tell me what it was. For instance, a blank to honor the United States Olympic basketball team, that was a resolution. A blank to limit the presidency to one six-year term was a bill. A blank to limit presidential campaign spending, um, that was um, a bill. Though it kind of could be a resolution, too. A blank to promote uh, support bilateral peace talks in the Middle East, that would be a resolution. A blank to promote alternative energy sources, probably felt that would be really a resolution. A blank to make English the official language of the United States, they kind of thought that was a resolution, but I explained that that's actually a bill that's actually introduced in Congress every single year. A blank to provide educational opportunities for Iraqi war veterans. It was our hope that that was an act and not something that was just resolved. Uh, that would be kind of bad. A uh, blank to remedy a mortgage lending crisis. Thought that was a bill. A blank to make September 11th a federal holiday. Uh, we kind of felt that could either be a bill or a resolution. It's actually kind of come up as both before. A blank to create a national handgun registry, that was definitely a bill. And then finally, a blank to fund a public option health care plan, which would have been a bill. Um, so we went through this lesson. Um, the, we talked about how laws are made, uh, how unfortunately the wheels of justice are uh, slow. Uh, one student asked if there was an organization that actually kind of wrote bills and the truth is there are they're actually both left wing and right wing groups that write bills for congressmen the most famous being a group called ALEC they tend to be more conservative so they push uh, certain ideas um, limiting gun control laws uh, 
outlawing more abortions, things like that. Um, and what they do is basically they put out boilerplate laws that they'll actually send to different congressmen uh, in state and local levels and even in the federal government. Um, and basically it's a completed bill where all they have to do is basically put in their own name, the name of their legislative body, and it kind of goes along with the whole idea that these people in Congress today, you know, not only are they not hardly even reading their bills anymore, um, it's actually to the point where they're not even writing them either. So our thought was if we wanted to see a resolution or a law, our best bet would be to actually write it for our Congress people uh, in the hopes that they would read it, like it enough, and go on from there. Um, so that's this lesson, uh, my final lesson for this class. I do apologize that it's not the way I wanted it to be, uh, but unfortunately, you know, we got to get this done. Um, so that is my presentation on how to write a bill or a resolution.